Today, I'm gonna to make this lawn top dressing tool. I'm gonna to design it in Fusion 360, and because many of you asked for it, I'm gonna be using parametric design for it. The goal is that you guys can follow along and learn the process as well. Uh, of course, this is 3D printed. We're gonna print this on the CR10, and yeah, then we're gonna put it to use right here on this very lawn. Let's go. So starting out in Fusion 360, the first thing I did, as in many projects, is just to draw out the build volume, the build area that I had available. So pretty much my only option was to print this on the CR10, which is the largest printer I own. And before I even started out drawing anything else, I went up here to modify, change parameters, and kind of set the basic dimensions that I wanted. So each of the hex tiles should be 60 millimeters in width, and the wall thickness of each one should be three millimeters. We can always go back and change these without having to go back into the sketch and change anything in there. Then I drew up the actual hex shape and gave it the hex size parameter as a size. And there we go. Now those two are linked. And whenever you go in and change the parameter for the hexagonal tile size, the dimension in the sketch changes and anything that is built on top of that. The same goes for the wall thickness. But in this case, I'm using half the wall thickness on the inside and half the wall thickness on the outside. And that's possible because you can do math in any of these fields and you can include any of your parameters in that math you're doing. Now to actually get from that single hex tile to the actual grid was kind of a bit of a challenge because if all you're doing is a square grid, you have the X and Z directions available anywhere in Fusion 360 and that's just super easy to use. However, a hex grid needs to be offset from that 90 degree angle. So I tried a few things. I tried using some edges from the actual geometry. So what I ended up doing is just to create a small helper sketch that just had that second direction that I wanted to pattern to follow. Now, all I had to do in that pattern was to use that same hex size dimension and disable those copies of the original hex that it didn't want. And now we have this beehive looking kind of approximated round grid. Of course, as is, you can't really do much with just that grid. So next up, I added in three mounting points by just filling in the bottom of three of those hex grids. Because I'm referencing the already existing geometry in this sketch and I'm basing everything else off of that, uh, I can always go in and change the uh, parameter for hex tile size and that sketch is also going to get updated so we're not gonna have any collisions for geometry or stuff sticking out where it shouldn't be. And one last detail that I wanted to add in was a bit of a curve to the top surface or when it's in use, the bottom surface of this hex grid. This is just so the corners don't dig into the grass and get caught there. My first thought was using the sweep feature to extrude a curved path along a curved sketch and cutting away the top of this part like that. But since Fusion 360 has that create sphere option, which just creates a, a solid sphere, a solid ball shaped solid, um, I wanted to use that and intersect that with the geometry I already had. At first, it was a bit tricky to get the sphere aligned because what I ended up doing was to create it in the origin of the part and then moving it down the radius of the sphere. So the exact right amount that it would just skim the top of the already existing grid. But in the end, I managed to make it work. And again, I used the parameter for both the radius of the sphere and the amount that is getting moved down after the fact to get an adjustable top curvature. And I just tried a few different parameters to get one that I liked. And that's the hexagonal grid done. A quick export as STL and in the slicer there's actually not much that you can tune. Since the print of this part is going to consist mostly of just outer walls, infill structures and such are not going to do a whole lot to this. I did however go with a 0.25mm layer height and a pretty fast print speed just to get this pretty large part done as fast as possible. Now there's one more 3D printed part in this project that I needed to design, and that is the broomstick handle holder, which connects the handle to the actual business end of this tool. Now, because this needed to connect to two other parts, mainly the platform that these hex grids are gonna sit on and the actual handle, the stick, uh, the design approach was a bit different. So for this one, I started out by sketching up the broom handle and then kind of working my way around it. And while I do start out by just entering the dimensions for all these parts in the sketch directly at first to get a rough idea of, you know, how this part is going to look and how it's all going to work together, I do end up exchanging these four parameters so that later I can go in and change them in whichever way I want. So at first I drew up the area where the handle meets the printed part just as this kind of dome shape and you can see me spinning it around here, kind of looking at it and 
you know, examining it, and I wasn't really happy with the way this sat in there. The contact area between the handle and the printed part isn't particularly long in this design, so you're gonna get a lot of moment, a lot of torque on your printed part. And while I will be printing this pretty strong and I know the PLA I'm using does hold up to a lot of abuse, uh, it is still plastic at the end of the day. And the last thing that I needed was this thing breaking when I was half done with the project. So with a new sketch for the handle broomstick adapter thing, uh, you can see that pretty much all of these dimensions are parametric and the FX tells you that these are constrained externally and you can't really just punch in a number in that sketch right there. Because I was referencing the already existing geometry, including that dome that I extruded previously in that new sketch, Fusion 360 started complaining about certain references not being there anymore as I deleted that upper dome. I could have gone about this differently and just cut it back off instead of deleting that feature entirely, which would have kept the references intact, but that is not what I did. So you're gonna see Fusion 360 complain about reference errors. Now, as long as the part looks the way you want it to, you can safely ignore those, but these errors are something that is gonna come back and haunt you if you have a fully parametric design and you change something and that reference that it's referencing off isn't there anymore. So that might lead to some wonky behavior. In my case, I fixed most of them, but you should always try to get an error-free sketch just for, you know, consistency and such. The last feature I add here is a cross-drilled screw hole that is going to anchor the handle to the rest of the part. And I'm not using parameters for this. I don't expect this exact feature to ever change. I've already picked the exact screw that I want to use for this. So it's totally fine to just have the dimensions in the sketch. And after all, like you can still go into the sketch and change them there if you really have to. Now, if any of you actually know how to change the Fusion 360 behavior and to have the axes, the X, Y, Z axes align with what your printer is seeing, so you don't have to rotate your part as you import it into the slicer every time, please drop that in the comments below because that's something that's really bothering me. Now for this part, because it's gonna see a lot of forces, a lot of stress from you know me pushing the thing around, I wanted to have it as strong as possible. And I believe the mathematically, like theoretically best structure you can use for infill is gyroid and Slicer Prusa Edition does have that implemented. So I gave it a shot and I think it turned out rather well. Prints fast too. So here's all the parts that we need to make this uh, top dressing tool. So we've got the three grids. Uh, actually, these are printed from each one generation of the uh, Infinity Blue. So this is the final one. This is the one that you can buy. Uh, that was the second revision, kind of a very metallic glossy one. And this was the first one. This could have been Infinity Blue but it wasn't. It's still a really nice color. So we've got these three grids. It's gonna be relatively large. Um, we've got the adapter from, you know, these grids to the broomstick. We've got the broomstick right here, but what's still missing is uh, the one piece that ties all these together. So that's gonna be a wooden plate that size where this guy is gonna sit in the middle. And, you know, typically you would make that from plywood, but plywood is expensive and I don't have any around. So I'm gonna be using this OSB. I think this is the 18 millimeters, so that's three quarters of an inch, I think. Um, it's intended for a different project, but I think there's enough left over that I can like borrow just one of these corners right here. So here's the plan with these. There is actually one way that these can fit together. Um, let me see, like that. Where there's literally just one tile left in the center, but we still need to attach the top mounted uh, broomstick holder kind of contraption right here. And that would fit in like this. But since this is, I mean, we'd have double walls here. So I'm actually gonna take these apart and leave like one honeycomb between each of them. So there's one honeycomb, there's another one, and there's the third one. So these don't need to be perfectly aligned. So I think this is just gonna be as good as it gets. And then we can fit this guy in. Actually, hold on, we can use this as a spacer. There we go, let's just align these by eye. I think that's looking good. Oh, and also because it would probably bother me to no end if this was wrong these should be aligned in the same way. So these kind of form a, a nice shape and one isn't just turned the wrong way. That would be catastrophic. Thank you. 
So lastly, I need to get the handle holder on and it needs to be somewhere like this, but I have no easy way of referencing this on the top side. So I'm just gonna flip it over, position it in the center right about here. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then we're gonna drill it from this side and flip it over again to attach it all. So lastly, to attach the handle, there's this one cross screw that goes through here uh, that screws into the base as well. But first I need to cut off this uh, tapered end of the handle so it fits flush all the way down and then we can screw it down and we're done. We're ready for use. screwed in somewhere. Seems to be holding. All right, so that's the uh, finished tool. I mean, it's it's gotten pretty heavy overall. Um, I like the way it feels in the hand. It is very easy to use, but I've noticed that it is pretty hard to push. So uh, that's kind of a combination of two factors. So first of all, these are very sharp on the bottom here. These don't have like a gliding surface on them. But also I think I need to kind of lower the handle a bit more. So I, I kind of push it over like this a bit more and don't push it into the ground and the other thing I kind of don't like is the way the uh, the handle is sitting in the handle holder this is still rocking around just a bit uh, it doesn't feel very safe so I'll end up reprinting uh, the handle mount piece right here so I'll end up doing that overnight that's gonna be done tomorrow so what I can still do today is I can give this lawn a really short mow so that we don't have all this stuff sticking up and the sand and compost can really get underneath the grass and give it a nice even surface. I hate gas powered lawnmowers as much as an axe guy. Um, typically this would be a job for the electric lawn mowing robot, but since this is such a shortcut and the robot doesn't really go that low and it would be banging against the stone border here, uh, I just went ahead and mowed that by hand. And with the work outside done for the day, uh, it was time to head back to Fusion 360 and adapt this broomstick handle adapter piece uh, to what I found out out on the lawn, that this needed to be a bit shallower and that the handle fit could be a bit tighter. Now, because this design is mostly parametric, it should be really easy to change this. Now, I did use a parameter for the broomstick handle size, which I was able to change from 28 to 27 millimeters, but I did not tie in a parameter for the angle of attack of the broomstick. So while you can go into this list down here with all the dimensions you set in each sketch, I decided to open up the sketch directly and change it there so that I don't change the wrong one. After adapting the angle from 40 to 35 degrees, we can see that the cross drilled screw is still perpendicular to the handle broomstick axis, so that's fine. But because this entire thing was more shallow now, you can see that this one front hole was partially getting covered up. But because we have that one parameter for offset, we can just change that until everything fits together. I used the same print settings as before, and now all that was left to do was to let this part print overnight. It's the next day, our part has printed beautifully. Uh, I did change the print settings a bit to, to print it just a, a bit faster, but this came out beautifully. Uh, let's get it installed and let's get this project done. Maybe a bit too tight. <laughs> ha 
That is nice. There is like no stop in this. All right, let's go and put this thing to work. So this is the compost and sand I'm gonna be using. This is just regular play sand uh, and some regular compost. This is probably the wrong stuff, but if you always just wait to get the perfect stuff for your project, then it's just never gonna get done, you know? I'm just gonna start with a rough one, two, three mix of sand to compost, at least for like bags and stuff that I have. Um, it's probably more like a two to one or something. Then we're just gonna see how that works out. Yeah, that is actually looking quite nice. Yeah. That's pretty much what I was going for. I'm just gonna start over here and work my way around, see how it goes. Wow, that is working. That is working really well. I did, so so I can push it just fine. Uh, I can drag it just fine. And look at this. This has all sunken below the grass already. There's no, no exposed sand anymore. Perfect. Like over there, we have a, a bit of a dip, so that's just all exposed. But here you see no sand or no compost at all. Well, maybe, maybe except for the small bits of compost there, but overall, it's all, it's all worked in perfectly. That's pretty exhausting. <sighs> All right, quick change of plans. It turns out using that tool to actually distribute the sand and the compost is really exhausting. You, you might be able to see the sweat dripping on my face. Uh, so what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna use the uh, rake, the wide rake, just to spread everything. Um, I'm not gonna mix it beforehand. I'm just gonna spread it with the rake and then I'm gonna work it in with the top dressing tool. Sounds like a plan? Let's go. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, not exactly the most even application that I could have done. I probably could have used like twice as much compost, but uh, it'll be fine. Ouch. So, so that actually turned out better than expected. Uh, so this in total was six bags of sand and like one and a half bags of compost. And yeah, there's some spots like right here where there's, you know, the sand's still visible, but that should dissipate over the next few days. But overall, if you look at this, this is, yeah, maybe a bit darker because I've stirred up a lot of compost and, um, you know, I've stirred up the soil a bit, but overall this looks really nice. So three more things I want to do is, first of all, I want to put down just a bit of, of seed, just a bit of fresh seed. Uh, it is mid-October, I don't know if that's gonna do much, I don't know if that's gonna germinate at all. I'm also going to put down some fall-specific fertilizer, and last thing, I'm gonna water it all in, so it is nice and even, and that should also settle the sand in a bit more.
a bit of fertilizer knowledge while we're at it. This is an NPK fertilizer. It's 7310. So this is 7% nitrogen, it's 3% phosphorus, and it is 10% potassium which is K. So the nitrogen you want in summer to get it like really lush and, and green and full. The potassium you want when you're seeding to get root growth and the potassium you want when you're going into winter and you want a strong and uh, resistant lawn. So this one is mostly potassium which is perfect for fall. Which you know incidentally is also what this thing is called. This is called fall lawn fertilizer. Perfect. All right, so overall, I think this tool turned out really well. The difference of, you know, angle of attack on the handle from 40 to 35 degrees, so that the reprinted handle holder kind of part made a really big difference. Um, as you probably were able to tell, I, I mostly use this tool uh, pushing, so pushing it into the lawn, and that really helped pick up all the sand and compost and really spread it out evenly. Um, with the steeper one, that was pretty hard. Now, what I also realized is the way you hold it and the way you use it makes way more of a difference than you know pretty much everything else on this design uh, because this is all sharp corners this is all you know just a you know 90 degree angle and there's no skates on it or any sort of like ski surface that would allow it to slide over the lawn these really like to dig in but overall worked really well also the 3d printed parts held up perfectly uh, you can kind of feel that this bottom surface is, feels a bit smooth. Like it feels like it's been just smoothed over, but that might just be uh, the compost that is stuck in here. And overall, just the, the standard PLA held up really well. And the broomstick handle too, it creaked a few times, but I don't think anything broke in here. So really happy with the results. Um, and it was just a really nice exercise too, learning about parametric design in Fusion 360. I think it's, it's really powerful and it is really easy to do for you know what you can do with it. So yeah, if you think you learned something from this video, I hope you did, that's the goal. Uh, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, do hit that bell or YouTube will not show you notifications. So don't forget to do that. And if you wanna support this channel, you can either just buy stuff through the affiliate links in the video description below, or you can directly support it on Patreon with a dollar or two per month. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.